I want to bring the first text that we're going to come out of is in chapter uh, in Second um, Second uh, Corinthians chapter four. Okay, I'll get it right in a minute. Second Corinthians chapter four. Going to read a verse out of there, and then we're going to go over to Galatians. Okay, uh, to do that, uh, just some things we want to we want to touch base with about what Paul was talking about to the Colossians church. Amen. Uh, same goes for us. Amen. Same goes for us of where we are today and what's going on and. Realize today, my friend, listen, we, whether we realize it or not, I know the church is doing great and everything's going good, but you have, you have folks sitting outside the door out here, uh, that's waiting on to change your mind. Amen. Uh, this actually wants to change you from the way you're thinking, from the way you're walking. Uh, would love to turn us around just like that. Amen. But I tell you what, we're going to stay with Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're going to stay with Jesus. And that's what it's about. We're going to stay with Him. Over in, uh, Second Corinthians chapter Chapter number four, uh, we're going to read uh, verse number seven. If you will, stand for the reading of God's word, and we'll read that verse. We'll pray. Praise the Lord. Y'all there? Just say praise the Lord. Praise Bible said in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter four, verse number seven, it says, But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. It says that the excellent of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Ain't that good? Let's read that again. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, God, we love you. We thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace. And God, we ask you now, Lord, to help us tonight. God, to preach the word of God you laid on our heart tonight. God, that we can, Lord, leave and say it was good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. God, we pray now, God, that you'll take these scripture tonight. And Lord, apply them to the places, Lord, to the hearts that needs to be applied to tonight. Dear Father, now, Lord, you know every need, you know every circumstance in this place. God, you know every heart in this place. God, God, you know, Lord, if there's one that don't know you from the free part of the sin, God, Lord, you're able tonight, God, to reach down and save them. And God, I pray, Lord, that they will surrender that right now to you, dear Lord. Turn their life around, God, and just give it to you tonight and let you have the will tonight. Father, we thank you. We love you. We give you praise now, God, for all that you do. Touch all these requests, God, that's been mentioned tonight. You know them all by name and by need tonight, Lord. Now help us, Lord, to preach the word. We love you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, praise the Lord. And praise the Lord. He is good to us. Amen. He's good to us. And so uh, we're going to see this over and over in first, I'm over in Galatians in chapter one of Galatians. We're going to be there. I'm going to pick up in verse number three, amen, in verse number three. But I want to go back to 2 uh, Corinthians just for a minute in chapter four, verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. In other words, my friend is talking about us, amen. Uh, what you see is earthly vessels, amen. Every one of us in here carries that same thing, amen. We may look different. We may talk different. We may smell different. We may walk different, but we still have the same earthly vessels, amen. It don't matter. The Bible says said that, in ex that, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. In other words, it, it's, it's, it, this thing ain't no count. Amen? But what God has put on the inside, listen to me, uh, we are children. If you are born again, and I'm talking to the Christian tonight, all right? If you are born again, you have an excellence in you that Christ has made you that way. Amen? And that's what made us who we are today. Praise the Lord. And so as Paul gets over into the Galatian church, he's going to uh, kind of expound on this kind of thing towards them because he has heard now. Uh, remember where Paul's at. I'll give you kind of a rundown of what's going on and where Paul's at. And the ladies probably already know all this, but I'll give it back. I'll give it to you, all right? Over in, uh, at this time, Paul was uh, most likely in Rome. Amen? In the prison in Rome. And this at the time he wrote this book was probably about 60 years from the birth of Christ. Amen? Uh, from the time that he wrote this, uh, uh, this, this letter uh, uh, to the uh, to the Colossians church, amen, and understand about Galatians. To give you a little background on Galatians, at the time uh, before this was, back in the day, uh, Galatians was, was a wealthy place, amen. This was a wealthy uh, city uh, there, but over the years, and by the time that Paul had wrote this letter, uh, it wasn't what it used to be, amen. It's done come way down. The city was, had done, uh, uh, other cities had outgrown it, around it, had outgrown it. Now, at the time that Paul 
wrote the letter, Galatians was a small city by this time. Amen? Uh, in, the, in this day. And remember where this is at. The day, if we would talk about this, uh, uh, we also know that about 100 miles was Ephesus was about 100 miles away uh, from Galatians. Amen? And we also look back and see about the uh, what's going on at this time and, and, and everything is going. Uh, they, a lot of people had forgot about the Galatians. Amen? But there was a lot of people in Galatians there, uh, the people that was, that believed in Christ. Amen? They heard the truth. They, they heard that, that God was who he was. They heard that uh, the, the, uh, the gospel to say, and that's what Paul had talked about. They heard the gospel. Amen? Uh, of, along this way. And well, the time they learned all this, my friend, there again, like I say, many folks didn't have a lot to do with Galatians anymore or talk to them, didn't pass that way or anything anymore. But Paul wanted to write to them and let them know what they was doing to keep up the good work, amen, of what they was doing because uh, they, there's a guy, and I can't, I probably cannot pronounce his name, but y'all ladies probably can. Uh, I, I told him, I, I told uh, Tammy, I was kind of call his name. I told her, I said, I, I can tell it like this, help us fuss, amen. <laughs> if you go down and read it, look at the book, read it and, and read his name, it's about what it uh, uh, comes to. I said, Lord have mercy, but if that's, you're going to see it in a minute, amen, but that's how I remember him, amen, that's how I remember him, and so uh, we're going to see that in the Word tonight, okay, so I'm giving you a rundown, sort of where we are and what's going on at this time, but understand, all of this tonight is wanting you to stand, amen, stay on board, that's what Paul start writing this letter to the Galatians about, about them staying on board, amen, because remember, there was all kind of uh, uh, false teachers around them, every day they was false teachers, and they didn't go and say, I want to teach you a new doctrine. They'd take the doctrine that they was having, and they would add to it, or they would uh, or they would take away from it. Amen? It was one of the two. So they didn't go in and change it uh, to make it like they was after a whole new deal, but they said they add to a little bit, or take away a little bit. Amen? Well, guess what happens when you do that? Amen? You might as well throw it all away. Amen? Uh, because it ain't no count. But my friend, that is where we're living today also. Amen? In a time that where the, the people today will want to add to it or they want to take away from it. Amen? Uh, they want to add what they're doing or what they, they want to put on you. They want to add a little. Or if you're doing too much that they think is too much, well, they'll take a little away from it uh, to please their way of living. Amen? Well, listen, Paul was telling the Galatians here, he said, you keep up doing what you're doing. I'm going to tell you, uh, you just keep praising the Lord. You keep serving the Lord. You keep doing what you're doing and don't listen to them because it's out there. Now, if you go and you read through the book of Galatians, in the book of Galatians, Paul mentioned Christ, about talked about Christ more than any book, that he, a letter that he wrote to another church. Amen? A lot of the time in the other churches, he was writing to them and he was telling them of the correction that they needed correcting. Amen? Or the things that they was doing. Paul was doing that. Remember, Paul went out and set up a bunch of churches. Amen? And all this time, but at this time, he was letting them know, I want to tell you and write you and tell you, keep up the good work. Amen? If I would say anything to the church of Spring Hill today, let's keep up the good work. Amen? Let's not let anything come around to try to mess us up by adding to us or taking away from it. Listen, I'm not talking about adding to the church. I'm talking about adding to the Word of God. Amen? We don't need anything added to it. We don't need anything took away from it. We just need to walk in what we got. Anybody? Have I got anybody on board with me tonight? Amen? How many knows there's enough right here to abide by? Hallelujah. There's 66 books right here, and we're going to try our best to abide by them and live by them, and I don't need no more added to them, and I don't need none took away. Amen? Matter of fact, over in the book of Revelation, the Bible said, if we, ta if we take out, or we add to. Amen? The Bible said that he would add to place to our life, or he would take out our part out of the Lamb's book. Amen? Uh, do you hear what I'm saying to you tonight? So, Paul was mending them and said, let's keep it up doing the good thing. So we're going to get into the verses of what Paul was talking about. The Bible said here in verse number 3, it said we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praying always for you. Paul's talking to the Galatian here uh, because he's heard uh, about what's going on over there. 
in verse number four, it says, since we heard of, of your faith in Christ Jesus, it says, of, of the love which you have, uh, which you have to all the saints. Amen. In other words, I've heard about the love that you had. It's not, you ain't want to uh, leave none out. And you ain't want to put none down. You want not, you got to love the same love for all of them. Amen. And, and, and I want to commend you on that. Paul's writing this letter to them and letting him know the only way you got that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only way you got it. And then he gets on in the heat of the scripture in verse number five. He said this. He said, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Amen. He said, wherefore ye heard before in the word in, uh, in the word of, of the of the in the word of true of the truth of the gospel. Amen. Now Paul, I'm telling you, Paul's building them up. Amen. Paul's going to the Galatians. He's reminding them. He's building them up. He said, listen, you're not doing what you're doing for nothing. Amen. I'm glad to tell you tonight, we're not doing what we're doing just to come into a service another Sunday. I'm telling you, uh, my friend, there's a payday at the end of the road. Amen. I, I come to tell you, now listen to me. I don't think there's nothing in the world wrong with the life that I live for Jesus. Amen. Somebody says, well, what if there ain't no God when it comes time? Well, I don't believe I hogwash to start with, I, but just say if they wouldn't. Amen. I, I still ain't hurt nobody. I ain't done nobody no wrong. I've laid down at night and I ain't sleep. Amen. I, but you, on the other hand, the sinners, I, they try to beat this one, do that one, I, or live wickedly. I, I, my friend, listen, they're going to, you go. You can't sleep already at night sometimes on kind of junk that was done. But my friend, listen to me. What if the day when we come down to the line and say, okay, today is a day of death. I, my friend, if nothing else from me, uh, 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 I'm telling you, if I was no but if they are God uh, and you live in sin, uh, uh, what about is going to happen with you? Uh, uh, hell will be your home. Hallelujah. And what Paul was trying to tell the, uh, to the Colossian, he said, keep up the good work. Strive doing what you're doing because I'm telling you, uh, there's treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Well, that'll make you want to keep fighting the fight, won't it? That'll make it worth the while of another swing or another knockdown or another get up. Amen. That's what Paul was wanting them to understand. It's worth it. It's worth doing what you're doing. It's worth loving like you love. It's worth telling the, uh, the, the city about Jesus Christ. It's worth all that church. It's worth uh, getting up on a Wednesday night uh, and coming to church. Uh, it's worth coming to church on a Sunday morning. Uh, it's worth giving God the praise on a, on a Monday morning uh, whenever things broke lose. It's worth calling out to God and say, God, no matter what, I'm going to serve you today. Hallelujah. It's worth all that. That's what Paul's letting them know. It's worth it. It's worth it. See, sometimes, understand this, Paul knew where they lived. He knew what was there. He knew there was people there that would try to mess them up. And he knew that if they could get it into them, they would try to make them think it wasn't worth doing what they're doing. And guess what? Paul then would say, well, we lost some, but we don't want to lose any. Amen.